Hello everyone and welcome to Chat with Dofan. I'm happy to come to you again with another word this beautiful Sunday evening or afternoon, wherever you're watching from. Um, so something interesting happened this morning on our way to church. Our kids, number two and three, <laughs> were having an argument and the next thing, um, our, our second girl, um, was frowning, she was looking very upset, and we asked what happened. And she said, Steve put his finger in my eye. And um, <laughs> our nanny was saying, Oh, it's okay now, it's okay, don't cry again. I'm like, Don't be upset, cheer up. And I discovered that we do that a lot, even as adults. Okay. Um, okay, she also said that T already apologized and he, he said sorry. And T was still saying sorry, V, sorry, V. But I'm like, she still feels uncomfortable. Her eyes still hurt. Saying sorry didn't completely take away the pain, you know. And T shouldn't expect her to just snap out of it immediately. This is what happens in a lot of relationships. You hurt someone, you offend someone, and you think just saying, I'm sorry or buying a present or trying to do something nice will take the hurt and the pain away immediately. I also think that's unfair to do that or to expect that. We have feelings and it's important that we let people deal with the way they feel at their own pace. It's true that we want them to forgive the person who has hurt them, but you shouldn't rush the person the offender shouldn't say, snap out of it already, I apologized. Um, didn't I apologize? I already said I'm sorry. Then cheer up or smile now. That's really unfair and insensitive. I hope you get what I'm saying. I, I just thought about it. I know I've been there. I've done that as well. Maybe I offended my husband or I said something in a way that he didn't appreciate. And I apologize. But he's still kind of moody and still trying to you know, just get over what happened. But I, I just want him to start playing already. I want him to start laughing. It doesn't work like that. We're not like machines. We're emotional beings. And we need to be emotionally intelligent in dealing with one another in relationships. And so that conversation in the morning, and, you know, we just talked about it. We told Tomato to just let Vese be, let her, you know, feel better at her pace. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked about it. And so this evening, I just want to share a few tips that will help you deal with um, conflict in your relationship because we'll definitely have these um, issues in marriage. We'll, we'll deal with conflict. We'll deal with differing opinions. We'll deal with offense and ha having to forgive over and over and over again. Marriage is for the long haul. It's a long term or lifelong relationship and we need to be skilled in resolving or managing conflicts as we grow. I remember years ago that whenever we had a conflict, I would be so sad and I just wanted it to be over immediately. But it's okay for someone to feel upset. You know, they can feel upset that he did something. Yeah, you have to deal with it. And the other person shouldn't just rest and say, you made me feel bad. You did this to me. The person has already done. The deed has been done. The question now is, how do I make it right? How can I make things better? What do I need to do not to offend you anymore? Or how, and then you have to ask yourself, how do I manage my, my feelings or my emotions that I don't let certain things you know get to me like they used to in the past we are growing it's a process and we have to be open to growth we have to be open to you know change and something that i learned fast is that um because my husband is upset about something i did doesn't mean his love for me has reduced you know <laughs> it doesn't mean his love has, for me has reduced i did something that was he was uncomfortable with and it's just natural and I don't have to take it to heart that, oh my God, I'm so bad, I've done. Remember, you're not what you do, okay? We make mistakes, we act in certain ways sometimes that it's not, you know, it's not aligned with who we are, maybe because of the given circumstances 
or maybe we're triggered by something from the past there are different reasons and we need to understand that okay so i'm just going to share quickly some tips for handling conflicts if you get offended or if you offend a loved one your spouse in this situation how should you go about it instead of giving the silent treatment or waiting on the other person to initiate um healing or initiate the conversation that will bring a re resolution of that conflict what what should you do or instead of fighting and yelling or telling everyone else apart from the person who has offended you what should you do okay this i have called it how to fight like a christian we as believers have a different way of operating and this is going to you know really help i trust god that it will help you um fight right you know fight fair and continue to walk in love in your relationship so the first thing i know it may sound cliche is to pray first um and everything that we talk about here on this community is always based on god's word this is what i practice in my personal life in my relationship and it has worked for me so pray first so before you address any conflict at all you can say a quick quiet prayer in your heart help me lord help me to say this right help me to say this right or open the heart of this person to receive what i'm going to say you know sometimes um maybe it's your spouse or your friend is acting in a way that you feel like it's, it will help them or the relationship in the long run and you want to kind of address the situation sometimes it's tough trying to be diplomatic you want to be kind you don't want to upset depending on the level of that relationship how how far gone you guys are in that relationship some people are so sensitive over sensitive others are insensitive so there's there has to be a balance and the holy spirit can help you and that's why i said pray first the truth is that God cares about every detail of our of our lives. The tiniest details. I always remember my mom um, saying that um, we have, she used to say that whatever concerns me, like if I care about it, God also cares about it. That's how much he cares about us. You know, scripture tells us that the hair, he knows the number of hair on our heads. How, how much more detail <laughs> details can someone be he cares about us if he cares about the sparrows if he cares about the birds in the air in the sky how much more do you okay so pray philippians 4 6 to 7 says in all things by prayer and supplication make your requests known unto the lord so make your request unto known unto the lord you don't have to lock up yourself or and you can make a simple quiet prayer there and sometimes this the conflict or the fight may be really deep or something that is a huge situation if you have to pray for a little while or ask someone to stand in faith with you that's fine but just pray tell it to the lord and let him help you say the things you need to say right and open the heart of your partner your friend to be receptive the second thing that i encourage you to do is listen okay make an effort to truly listen to the other person's perspective and don't just listen and immediately you want immediately you want to reply or to respond okay there's something called active listening you want to listen and give feedback all oh, right this is what you meant oh okay i didn't see it that way oh i understand you now then you repeat the words that they say so that you know you're, you're really getting it don't start defending yourself when the person is just expressing themselves sometimes people just want to be heard they want to feel heard you know feel seen and heard all right and scripture saying james 1 19 that we should be quick to listen slow to speak slow to become angry because human anger does not promote the righteousness of god you see like i'm understanding more and more why god gave us two ears and one mouth <laughs> he wants us to listen twice as much as we speak sometimes we speak too quickly we don't think before we talk and that can really cause harm to you and to your relationship so be slow to speak and quick to listen pay attention to what your partner is saying 
and ask questions so that they can respond. Sometimes somebody's hurt, but they don't know how to say it. But you need to ask, ask leading questions, things that will push them to speak. Okay. Then the third thing I um, encourage you to do is be calm. Depending on the gravity of the situation or the fight or the problem going on, just be calm because you can't take back your words. If you're so upset and you just begin to speak and speak and speak, you can't take back those words. It's just like my, my kids today, one poked the other one's eye and he couldn't take, he can't take it back. The deed has been done. It's like when you speak, you can retrieve the words. It's not like um, <laughs> what you poured something rice on the floor and then you can pack the grains back or you poured water. How are you going to, you can, you can easily pack the rice, right? But water, if you pour the water down, it's already there. It's gone. How do you sip it back up? You know, <laughs> when words are spoken, they, they're gone. And they are a seed in the hearts of people. It's difficult for them to take those words back. So you want to be careful what you say when you are upset. So breathe. There are breathing techniques. Take a deep breath. Count to four or count to five. Think deeply about what you want to say before you say it. So calm down, calm down. If you have to walk away for a bit before you come back and say what you want to say, say, please, I don't want to talk about this now. Can you give me a moment or let me think about this? Okay. Um, so approach the situation with calm. Avoid raising your voice or yelling or using aggressive, insulting language. You can't take your words back. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be with grace or seasoned with salt. You want those words to be gracious, not just anyhow. Our words are powerful, okay? So be calm and don't just speak quickly. The fourth thing I want to encourage you to do is to use um, I statements. I say this often. Instead of accusing people, like last week, I, I, I think I shared with you guys how we had a conversation with some friends right, who were dealing with communication issues. You, I, I feel or it's about you. You're saying, expressing how you feel or what you're going through or how you're thinking. Instead of pointing fingers, you did this, you did this, you that. When you start doing that, they will also remember what you did. And they will start to recount it because I, my husband and I, we 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 did that a lot. I don't think we do that so much anymore. But if he says, for example, you left the toilet seat up again, or you always leave the toilet seat up, I'm like, uh huh. And you spill water when you're having a bath, and what did I say? I just clean it up. So if you see the toilet seat up, just put it down and stop complaining. You know that's the way I would respond in the past. <laughs> and that's what happens you become defensive and remember what the wrong the other person did as well if you come with you did this accusing the other person they will automatically build up a wall and become defensive and that's not going to take you anywhere when it comes to resolving conflicts so express your feelings by saying i feel hurt when this and this happens or i feel unhappy when this and this happens or i feel unseen or unheard when this 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 happens you are not the accuser of the brethren the devil is so you don't want to partner with the devil in accusing your spouse they may do something or even if you feel like it's habitual it does not mean that's who they are they are better than that and they can be better than that so instead of highlighting their their weakness or how bad they are just make them understand the way you feel and any loving spouse will adjust to you know help you feel better you know so address situations with i statements instead of being accusing of your partner okay the fifth thing will be to seek um, common ground um a lot of times we focus on the things that divide us the things that um we feel like by hammering on the negative is going to change it won't change it so focus on the things that they are doing right focus on the things that you agree about you know your shared beliefs your shared values you know those things are going to bridge a gap between your um different opinions 
the Bible says Matthew 12 25 that the house divided against itself will not stand so you have to always look for things where places where you agree and strengthen those um, places because two cannot work together except they be agreed okay so always see common ground don't always be looking for negative things love does not um, it's not fault finding so stop looking for faults all the time look for the good things and amplify them and focus on the things the areas that you agree on sixth thing will be to be honest and kind there's something jimmy evans calls hot he says it's honest open and transparent conversation and the other day i made a post on social media saying that um marriage is a mystery but it is not a place for secrets because um, the kind of intim intimacy that marriage requires will not happen where there are secrets secrecy is the enemy of intimacy we've said that over and over again so you need to be open and honest share your thoughts and feelings in an honest manner okay and be kind about it don't shout again and yell remember love is patient and love is kind so you need to be kind and patient as you are sharing it maybe the person is not getting your point yet you need to be patient about it but do your best to be honest open don't hide anything don't say one thing and don't um, halfway and then in the middle of the conversation or when something else happens you remember again you need to be open and honest be try to be vulnerable with one another and that's why you have to you know be that safe space for your spouse where they can open up and not feel like they're um, you will be against them or you will use their words against them so honesty is so important mm. Okay, the next thing, that's number seven, I think I'm about to say, is apologize where necessary. Apologize how your spouse wants you to apologize or how your friend needs you to apologize. Just saying I'm sorry in a careless manner has not changed. They, they say something about um, apology and attitude, right? Um, it's not, apology is not complete if there's no change in attitude. So after you have apologized, you need to recognize your part in the problem. Don't just say sorry so that everything will go. It doesn't go like that. Recognize your part in the problem. I'm sorry I was wrong. I'm sorry I did this. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. You know, recognize your part in the problem and um, apologize with a sincere heart, willing to change. And then ask, how can I make things better? What can I do differently? You know, that's, that's a good start and deliberately begin to change that behavior it will take time for the person to trust you again depending on the gravity of the situation again so apologize quickly and honestly or sincerely the next one is number eight is forgive one of my favorite scriptures says to be kind towards one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ has forgiven us God in Christ thoroughly forgave us. He forgave us with all his heart. Some preacher some years ago said that if Jesus had not forgiven on that cross, he'd probably not have risen from the dead. That's how powerful it is. On that cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And I always asked, how did they not know? Eh? Were they controlled by an evil spirit? Spit on him, spit on him. And crucify him, crucify him. They didn't know. They didn't know what they were doing. Did they really not know? <laughs> but that was a mindset. And for us to live in total freedom, instead of holding on to grudge and holding on to pain and hurt, it's so important to let go, leave it to the Lord. He said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So if someone has hurt you or has offended you, ask God to help you to forgive them and let it go. And you have to make up your mind even before the offense happen. Because sometimes someone will hurt you and they don't even know. What if they don't apologize? Will you continue to hold it against them? Joyce Meyer says that, I think that's the first person I heard say it, that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person dies. The person you're offended at. You want to let it go. Be kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god 
in Christ forgive you. In the New Testament, we forgive as we have, for, we have been forgiven. We don't um, forgive so that we'll be forgiven. We forgive as we have for, been forgiven. Have you received the forgiveness of sins? Then you can let that flow to the person who has offended you and let it go. I think I'm speaking to someone specifically. Let it go now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive grace to let go in the name of Jesus. This is so freeing. Being able to forgive and let go is liberating. And the truth is that in some relationships, right, I know that um, the whole point of resolving conflict most time is so that there can be, relationship can be restored. That connection can come back. Sometimes the gravity of the hurt or the offense um, requires that there be no like reconciliation per se or reconnection. For example, you have been abused or you've been sexually harassed or molested, those kinds of things, even if it's by a relation or some, that's not a relationship to restore. I don't believe so. You can, someone can prove me wrong, but I don't believe that's a relationship that you should stay in. There are too many things to remind you of the hurt you've been through. You can forgive, let go, release that person in your heart. You don't have to be friends again. But in marriage, we know that it's a lifelong um, relationship. But if it's becoming so toxic, you're being hurt to the point of, trying to kill you and stuff like that, that one, you're already on my stand. You have to move away from that environment. God loves you so much and he has a plan and purpose for your life, okay? It doesn't have to end in being married to the wrong person, okay? So I've spoken so much on forgive, forgiveness. So choose to forgive, choose to forgive, okay? That's a Christian thing to do, to forgive. And if you are the offender, you shouldn't rush the person. They forgive, forgive, forgive quickly. That person has to make up their minds and do it at their pace. Even though I will encourage you to do your best to let it go as quickly as possible. Okay? The ninth thing is to focus on the solution. The aim here is to fix the problem. Whatever it is. So you need to go to the roots. This is something my husband taught me. So just saying, I'm sorry, it doesn't solve it. You have to go back. What happened? Why did this happen? What led to this? You know, and so that you can start fixing the problem from the roots so that it doesn't occur again. Someone can just say sorry and walk away and then it still didn't change. Then that sorry just didn't make any sense in the first place. Okay, so don't dwell too long on the problem. Try to fix the issue. The final one is that when it gets to a point where both of you can't just come to an agreement or to find a solution, then you need a third party. This has to be someone who is mature, professional, and truly godly. Okay, Not someone who will take sides. Not your father, not your mother, not your in-laws at all. Maybe your pastor or someone who is really a professional counselor. Because sadly, some pastors are not good counselors when it comes to marriage or relationships. They can teach you from scriptures, they can teach you some things, but when it comes to relationship counseling, some pastors are not properly equipped for that. And that's not their fault, really. Even though it's something that should be part of the training for pastors, but some, some pastors are not equipped for it, and that's just the truth. So you need to seek professional help, okay? A mature, trusted, person leader a couple that you count you you trust or you can um be accountable to okay um, the goal is to rebuild understanding restore relationship restore the connection so don't forget that that's your aim in doing all these things or one of these things depending on the situation that you are faced with so these are just simple tips okay don't forget them i'll just quickly run through them Again, I think I mentioned 10 of them. Okay, pray first. Be a good listener. Learn to listen actively. Stay calm. Use I statements to express how you feel and your concerns. And then seek common ground because 
two have to agree you have to work in unity all the time okay because the house divided against itself will not stand the sixth one i said is to be honest say your truth say the truth with all honesty and then apologize then forgive focus on finding the solution and then seek help i hope these tips have been helpful to you and you will use them. which of them are you going to use which one have you used before and how have you reconciled or resolved prof um, conflict in the past in your relationship i want to hear these things in the comments are you um, the one that shuts down and you don't want to talk about it at all or are you the one that wants to talk about it immediately and you want to just talk and talk and talk quickly and solve the problem what camp are you on <laughs> which of these tips are you going to use today i trust that this has been helpful for you i said that before okay okay <laughs> yes so if you're watching for the first time my name is dofan hikia i'm the apostle of love and the convener of this beautiful commun community here on the married victim blood community and it's always a joy to bring you a word on sunday evenings like this i hope that you will join us again next sunday for another word right and for everyone participating in marriage prep school well done well done this is week five and we're making so much progress i'm proud of you guys and this week we're talking about um the covenant so beautiful and if you haven't read my book married dipped in blood today is a good day to get a copy buy this book almost every day someone buys a copy of this book and i'm so blessed to hear all the testimonies okay so get your own copy today <laughs> all right so um, I pray for you that this week will be a fruitful one for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever your hands touch will prosper. You will find your way into God's perfect plan for your life and you will walk in it. You will experience the enforced rhythms of grace in all that you do this week in the name of Jesus. I declare that through you, all the families of the earth are being blessed. Your home is blessed. Your children are blessed. Your husband is blessed. Your wife is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your going out is blessed and your coming in is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you guys and see you again soon. Bye.